Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about the window cleaning lies, the lies that are in the industry, and the things that you've probably heard you might have thought are true, but if you're in the industry or getting into this industry, this is a good one. You're going to like this one, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Hey, if it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully, you enjoy it. Six years. We're coming up on our six year anniversary of this show uh, every single week. Have not missed one yet, knock on wood. Go back, watch, listen. I hope you found this show halfway enjoyable. Uh, I'm just some guy with a camera, but hopefully, you pick a thing or two out of it. Uh, go back, watch, and listen to everything. If it's not your first time here, I want to genuinely say thank you. There are so many of you that watch this show, thousands actually, every single week that watch the show, listen to the show more or less on uh, uh, iTunes and podcast platforms. And if you're out in the field right now cleaning windows, what's up? What's up? Thank you so much for uh, listening to this, sharing this, talking about this, all that stuff. It, it just genuinely, genuinely means a ton to me. Uh, everybody who's left reviews, all that stuff. And shameless plug of the week, I'm a sales rep. So obviously, um, I get paid by putting orders in. That's what I do. It costs you nothing extra. And I want to be your rep. I want to be your guy. There's so many of you too that have just started um, using me or people that have been using me for years. Um, I'm an account rep. That's what I do. I put orders in. I help you with questions, answers, bids, all that stuff. I want to be the guy in your back pocket. Big orders, small orders, it doesn't matter. $50 order. All orders count, and it really, truly means the world to me to let me do that. So if I could put your orders in for you and be your rep, save my number. It's 862-312-2026. Again, my name is Jersey. I'm probably the only one that you know named Jersey, so save it in your phone and text me every time you're ready. Uh, Thank you for that. And by the way, if you haven't seen the American Window Cleaner magazine, it's been around since 1986. That's all these stickers, the pictures, the posters, the all of that. Get your subscription to the American Window Cleaner magazine. Go to awcmag.com. It's a real magazine, a paper magazine that shows up at your door with real stickers every single month. And it's like 60 bucks, $69 you'll have for an entire year. So go and get a subscription because we're all window cleaning nerds and we want to be even more awesome. So go and get that. Take this window cleaning that you're doing seriously and uh, get the magazine. Anyway, okay, shameless plug is over. You're here to watch a show about window cleaning lies or listen to window cleaning lies. Now, there's a bunch of them out there. I talked to, let's say, Monday. I texted, just texted alone, with 48 different people on Monday alone. I, uh, I'm on the phone every week for about 15 hours a week. I am talking on the phone. I have a $200 headset because I'm on the phone so stinking much. I talk to window cleaners every day, all times of the day, except, you know, when I'm not or I'm in the mountains on the weekend. <laughs> but I talk to a ton of companies and I hear some of the most ridiculous things ever. The things that I could tell you and you wouldn't even believe. Because on top of window cleaning and just submersing myself in window cleaning and being in this industry for so long and owning a company and I've done media for all these years, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com, I'm all of these different things. I really, I have to say, of almost anybody in the industry, I probably have some of the most I don't even want to say knowledge because that sounds pompous, but I have the most activity in the in the industry. I've talked to more window cleaners than probably anybody else. I have uh, been involved in learning in this industry more than anybody else. I've done shows and, and podcasts and I've done the magazine and all these things. And I've heard amazingly crazy things. So I picked out a couple of them for you today that are probably the the most common ones that are said. And I'm going to start it off with one that drives me a little bit bonkers because it's missing the point. It's a great theory, but you're missing the point. 
And it's if you do good work, people will always call you back. You'll always have business and repeat business if you just do good work. I'm going to call absolute BS in that. You don't have to do good work. You have to do, you, you can't do bad work, right? But it's not how much, it's not that any one person has ever taken a magnifying glass to the window and looked at the corners and the edges and stuff. Nobody does that. And if they're doing that, that's not the reason they're calling you back. You have to do good work. I mean, you can't do bad work. You have to do good work. But that is zero the reason that they're calling you over somebody else. A lot of you pride yourself in your work, which is totally awesome. Do that. But it's not the work that can, creates a connection. I mean, you've probably had a HVAC company or an electrician or somebody do great work that you just didn't call back again. Yeah, just yeah, they, did, they did fine. They did good. Well, yeah. Like an electrician, if they do good, they do good. There's no, you can't tell like an electrician, like this guy did 100%. Same thing with window cleaning. We get stuck in that because we're window cleaners. We look at it. We know what we're looking at. People don't care. What gets you called back is the experience. How did somebody feel when they hired you? How did somebody feel when you showed up at their home? How did you make them feel? It's the reason you get called back. Not ever because you do good work. Because all the other companies they haven't used would do good work. No one ever in the history of ever have, has ever said, um, I'm going to hire this guy because he cleans windows so much better than I assume any other window cleaner. Nobody cares. You get stuck in that because you're a window cleaner. You get stuck in that because you're looking at windows. Customers look through windows. Don't get caught in that. I'm absolutely telling you. And by the way, if you want to argue me with any of these, jump into the comments, please. Uh, on YouTube, that's where we have most conversation. I love seeing comments there. Um, definitely text me. Let me know. Email me. Whatever you want. Tell me that I'm wrong. Absolutely. I'm not a person to ever tell you that I am 100% right. These are my thoughts, my feelings. And doing this as long as I have, I feel like... I've tried it kind of both ways, and this for me is the answer. It's the reason, and I said this a hundred times. If you listen to the show, you've heard this. But when you buy a new iPhone, do you ever notice a thing is wrapped in plastic all over? It's not film to protect. It's wrapped in plastic. The container has no seams on an iPhone. Look at the box. The way they make those boxes, there's no seams. There's no rough spots. It's soft and actually satin. The box has so much weight that you don't even want to throw it away. You want to rip the thing apart to see why it weighs so much. Is there something I'm missing? They don't even give you a charging block anymore. They blame it on the landfill, but you know, it's just costs. But people love, love buying new iPhones because they slide that box open that has low tolerances, right? That satin feel, it's almost rubbery. They slide the phone out and they peel each piece. It's the experience. People don't care that the phone is seven newtons faster, right? Phones are so fast now, there is no difference between what you can tell a phone versus a phone, unless you went from like an iPhone 1 or 2 to an iPhone 13. You can't tell the speed. Sure, maybe it's a little clearer, it doesn't matter. Maybe it takes a little bit better, better pictures, but a 10 megapixel picture versus a 12 megapixel picture, you're never going to tell. But why people always think they want a new phone is the experience of buying the new phone. It's crisp, it's clean. The lines, the... You are creating an experience. Don't get misled by quality over experience and why people call you back. People are not calling you back. Do good work, people will call you back. No. Create a feeling in them and they will call you back. If you your buddy does a service for you, you're going to hire him because he's your buddy. Do that. Connect with somebody. Show them how awesome of a person you are and your crew. That's what gets you to call get called back. The next big one, which I know 99% of you know this is what I'm going to bring up. Uh, window cleaning lies or myths even, is that razors scratch glass. Now, 
let me premise. A razor, the tip of a razor, and a normal pane of glass, there is something that has been rated uh, by the Hans scale, H-A-N-S. Hans, Hans, Hans. I always mix that up. There's ratings of hardness. A diamond is the hardest known thing. Well, the only way to cut a diamond is to use a diamond, right? So a diamond can cut a diamond, but you can't use a piece of glass to cut a diamond. What would happen if you took a diamond and glass and you tried to cut the diamond? The diamond would cut the glass, right? Well, glass is actually harder than the tip of your razor. So it's not possible for glass to cut a diamond like it's not possible for a razor tip to cut or scratch glass. Now, that's tempered, that's standard, that's glass. Now, where people get confused, and I get this pretty much daily or every other day, and they say, um, oh yeah, I heard you're not supposed to use a razor on tempered glass. I can scratch tempered glass. A, tempering is the process in what makes something harder. Tempered glass is actually harder than regular glass. So no, it cannot scratch even tempered glass, but what can happen is you have glass that has fabricating debris on it, which is pieces of glass on glass, right? So fabricating debris, think of it this way. And by the way, I'm not getting in the debate. Fabricating debris is not real because I've seen everything and gone over everything. Um, I don't even get where that's coming from. Uh, look at a lot of stuff that's been put out there. But fabricating debris is this, in a simple nutshell. A pane of glass is cut somewhere in the factory. They're beveling edges, right? They're, they're shaving down like a mirror. You know, a mirror's got like kind of a beveled edges. Well, it makes glass dust, and the glass dust are just real thin slivers of glass. And if you don't vent that right, and it gets in the air, what ends up happening is this dust lands on the glass. The glass comes out of the, the furnace, basically, and is hot. It's, it's almost molten, molten, right? As it's cooling, the glass lands on that, partially embeds in there. So now you have a piece of glass, and you have a bunch of little pieces of glass sticking out. What happens is, as you scrape on that glass, if it's there, it is very rare, by the way, but it's the razor will break those little itty bitty pieces of dust off the glass. If it breaks off the glass, then what ends up happening is that it is scratching the glass. It then is holding the glass against the glass and that is where you have a scratch. A diamond can cut a diamond, glass can cut glass. So if you're getting scratches, you can feel it, hear it ticking, right? That's fabricating debris in glass. It is not the scra razor scratching the glass. If there's something, you can even, on brand new glass, you can even scratch that with a, um, a, a pad, like walnut pad, or even a scrubber sleeve if you're pushing hard enough. All it has to do is it's holding those glass against glass, and that's what happens. This is why the older glass, you know, it's glass that's been cleaned a bunch of times, it's like 10, 20 years old, you can't scratch, or never. They're already scratched from years of whatever. But all those glass finds have already broken off. There's nothing left. A razor cannot scratch glass. Now, if somebody comes in here and says, what about low E? Low E is not glass. That's the coating on the glass. Usually it's between panes, so you're okay. What about tint? Well, tint is also a coating. It is not the glass. It is the thing that's on the glass. Obviously, with tint, you could scratch tint if it's done poorly, if it's done incorrectly or wrong. If it's done right at the factory, it's in between the panes. You don't have to worry about it. But a razor cannot scratch glass, so don't hesitate using a razor. Just be smart when you use it. Listen, if it feels like there's sand under your razor, just stop, right? People who have scratched entire jobs from this is because they weren't paying attention. It's not that they scratch, so use them. By the way, before, I know you're typing the, the angry uh, uh, text message and email right now, or comments in YouTube, eh? um, If you don't want to use a razor, and you're just like, I just don't feel comfortable with it, don't use a razor. You do not have to use everything that's in the industry. You don't have to use a razor. You don't have to try array rubber if you don't want. You don't have to use Waterford Pole. There's huge benefits to a lot of this stuff. I always use a razor. Every one of my guys has a razor. I carry a razor every single day when I was cleaning windows. Most people do. But it doesn't mean you have to use it, right?
Okay. The next myth or lie, I'll call it, is I can't charge more for my customer. Yeah. I just got in a big talk with somebody uh, yesterday. I can't charge more. No, no. These guys, these guys, I, I heard that, that they went with me because I'm the lowest. I know if I raise my prices, they're not going to go with me. It's because you haven't added value. If the only thing they see is, well, I get my windows cleaned and here's the price, that's all they're going to go on. But in every industry, in every market, in every everything, there is always somebody who is the most expensive. You don't have to be the most expensive, but when you tell me you can't charge me more, I call you a liar. Look at your market. Look at the other companies in your area. You, yeah, that one guy, that guy charges a ton. I don't know why anybody's paying him. They do. It's absolutely possible. If you think you can't charge more, that isn't because of um, what actually is happening. What that is is because of your brain. You're telling yourself you can't charge more. It's not your market. We're a luxury business. We're a luxury business, right? Lamborghini doesn't have a President's Day sale. They don't do commercials. They don't do any of that. All they do is focus on their brand and why their value is what it is. If you buy a Lamborghini, it's because you wanted a Lamborghini. No one's looking at me like, well, it's either going to be a Prius or a Lamborghini. Well, the Prius has good fuel mileage. That's all the Prius has, right? They try to do styling and things like that, but there's a lot of downsides to having a Prius. If those things are not present in the other one, the value is the Lamborghini. It's why people spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on a car when you can buy a car for $20,000. Now, I like this one because it makes people angry a little bit. And they're like, you're always telling people to charge more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if you're going to have a job, cool. If you're running a company, that's completely different. Now, if you have a job, that means you're making, maybe you're making 20 bucks an hour, right? If you're not making $70, $80 in production a man hour, you're, you don't have a company. You, you just have a job, right? If you're out there doing $20, $25 an hour, cool. You have a really awesome job. But you can't buy new equipment out of that money because now you're making less per hour. You can't advertise. You can't get different insurances. You can't upgrade your equipment or your truck. You can't wrap things, right? You can't do all that stuff that makes you a company. If you're an employee, the company does all that. If you worked for fill in the blank, XYZ. XYZ window cleaning hires you. Maybe you are an employee and you're thinking about going on your own or whatever. If you're an employee, you get paid a lot less. It's not because the market isn't paying a lot more. Even if you're working for somebody making $20 an hour, great. But you're paying $20 an hour because they're paying you for just your labor. They're buying the materials, the, the, the equipment, the wrapping, the advertising, the websites, the, all of that. You're just doing the labor. That's a job. If you're trying to do that same dollar amount and now you're putting that into yourself, you have a job. You can't buy new trucks or wraps or anything. You have to be running it as a business. And again, I don't say you have to. You can do whatever you want. I mean, nobody. I don't care. It's not, it's not up to me. It's your business. It's absolutely right. But don't tell me you can't charge more because that's a lie. The only reason you can't charge more is because your brain is telling you, I can't charge more. I can't charge more. That's your brain. The big dilemma in money, by the way, comes in like, say, um, uh, insulin. Insulin is needed by people to live. So the debacle comes is, I obviously can't make my own insulin. I have to buy it. So the price is, they want those prices to come down because they need it to live. They need it. So that's where that, like, oh, man, it's got to blah, 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 blah. 
But if you go and get a boob job or uh, some other kind of thing that doesn't, that doesn't, it's not a necessity, it's a want, it doesn't, it's a different thing. No one's picketing going, we need cheaper boob jobs. No one. Because you're going to find the doctor, the clinic, the whatever that has the value. Why do you walk into these places and they hand you champagne and water and whatever else? You've been to uh, doctors and fancy places like car dealers or expensive tailors for men's clothing or even female boutiques where they give you things and it's an experience and the candles and the music and the... You have your own personal shopper. It's, that's their value. That's why you choose them. Your luxury service. If you charged a million dollars a window, you would have zero customers. There is a cap. You can't go over things that are just absurd. But you can be on the top end. And I know guys out there making $100, $125 an hour, every hour, cleaning windows. What would you rather do? Would you rather do two jobs, or we'll say eight hours, would you rather clean eight hours a day to make, we'll say, $500? Or would you rather work two hours to make $500? Obviously, obviously you know what that is. Because now you could either fill up the rest of the day, make more money, or you could have more time. You could do it however you want. But when you think you're the Walmart, well, I'm cheaper because then I get other people and I get more customers that way. That's not how that works. It's labor. You're paying you're charging for your time. You're, an hour of time is an hour of time no matter how much you make for it. You could do somebody a favor and you still wasted an hour of your life for free. Walmart makes profits on everything they sell. If they sell a million items a minute, they can have a smaller margin and still make more money than if they sold a thousand items a minute. You are not a Walmart. It is not a bulk thing. It is a quality thing, it is a money thing, and it is a value. So don't tell me you can't charge more because you surely can. You don't have to, by the way. But, yeah. Uh, the next one, and this is one I really like because this is um, perpetuated by people who don't own one, is that water fed doesn't clean as well as scrubber and squeegee. It's absolutely malarkey. Now... There you go. Wait, 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 wait. If you use water fed, you get it. But here's the thing that people don't understand. A water fed pole takes the place of a scrubber and squeegee. It doesn't take the place of a scraper, a razor. It doesn't take the place of, of steel wool, right? You can add attachments and things like that, but it doesn't take the place of that. If you have paint or something and you're like, oh, I really need it, then you have to use a razor. You have to use steel wool. You have to use something, right? Now you can get the attachments on the water fed, but we're just talking about the actual water fed. But when somebody says they're splash and dashers, like I can do way better by getting up their nose to glass. If you're doing with razors and things that that doesn't do, sure, right? That's like saying, well, yeah, uh, shoes don't work as good as an airplane. Well, shoes don't do what an airplane does. They're two different things, right? Water fed does what a scrubber and squeegee does. When you use a soap in your water, that's an encapsulator. Pure water acts as an encapsulator. Same. The only thing a soap would do that uh, pure water wouldn't do is like removing oil or breaking down oil. Organics, it's the same. The big thing with a... Soap, when you're running like super oily windows, like say you have like a trucking place or a factory or something, that's breaking down the oils, encapsulating those oils, like Dawn in every commercial you've probably ever seen. And then squeegeeing, because now the, the oils are in the water, you squeegee that off. With pure water, the dirt becomes part of the water encapsulating, and the water rinses that encapsulated dirt off the window. Same thing. But a water fed scrubs and rinses the frames. When you're using a scrubber and squeegee, you're not doing that. So I beg to say that water fed actually does better than that. People go, well, I can't, I can't see what I'm doing. No, you can't. You can feel. You can feel. 
if you're going to argue about water fed, you can have like, oh, I don't know, man, I'm just up in the air on it. That's cool. But don't argue the fact like it's a fact when it's an opinion. And a lot of times when you see too, we get this, obviously we do a lot of pure water stuff. I love pure water. I've been in it so long. There's no way I would be a water cleaner without pure water. It's an amazing tool, not an end all. Don't let somebody say that, but it's a great, great, great tool. With that being said, we get new people into water fed daily, every day, probably once an hour. Somebody's getting into that. They're, they're getting to that step, right? And I hear a lot of the times where people go, well, um, yeah, I was reading online and, you know, they said it doesn't work as well, but, uh, you know, it's going to save me some time. Wait, what? You read online that it doesn't work as well from somebody who doesn't own a water fed. If you go, yeah, I see this all the time too, these, these great... Uh, old school dinosaur guys, but they jump on and they say online, they go, uh, yeah, keep using water fed because I'm getting all your work. Cool, you're getting the work from the guys who can't do the water fed. If you do crappy work with a squeegee, I'm gonna get your work. Like, that doesn't make sense. If I hand you a squeegee, you do a window and you're like, ah, man, I'm, I gotta practice, I'm not good. First time ever using a squeegee, you're gonna be terrible at it. I hand you a water fed, you do it, and it goes, yeah, it doesn't work. This ignorance of how things work, and uh, people put it out there like it's fact. It will absolutely do what a scrubber and squeegee does. Anyway, now you can write the the angry comments. Um, and the last one that I have to put out there uh, for you guys, as far as a window cleaning lie. By the way, I'm a little heated this time. I don't I don't mean to be so heated. I'm not uh, on a high horse. I promise. Uh, but it's the I can't hire employees like. People would leave if it wasn't me. No, no, no. My, my customers use me because of me. No, they use you because the person they deal with is awesome, which is you. But you take you away and you put somebody else in who's also awesome, doesn't matter. People don't like you as much as you think they like the you. You're probably an awesome person, 100%. They probably use you because of the experience that you create right? They feel really good talking to you because you're super kind, you're personable, you do good work, you're just clean. You Take you out of that and put somebody in that is also nice and personable, talks well, is clean and does good work. The first time that happens, they go, oh man, where's Tom? Uh, yeah, Tom is uh, actually out of the field now. Ah oh, man, that sucks. They like the next person. It is not the you that you can't hire people or have somebody out there helping or whatever. It's the person that you put there. They have to be super personable. They have to make them feel really, really good. It doesn't have to necessarily be you. So if you think that you can't have employees because they can only hire you, you're absolutely mistaken. Try it. The segue from those people who have used you for 10, 20 years and go to somebody else, doesn't feel real great right away, but then they fall in love with that person. The big thing is, is that if you have somebody awesome, it's going to be awesome. People are so scared for feedback that isn't absolutely pat on the back, you're awesome, hoorah, rah. People send me stuff all the time. They go, hey, man, look at my website. What do you think? I'm not going to tell you how awesome it is. It just does you no good. I'm going to point out all the things I see that are bad about it. And then people get butt hurt. And it's like, you have to be able to accept good criticism like bad criticism. And one thing that that comes into play is when people start having employees. All of a sudden they get, yeah, I had this guy and, and I went to the homeowner and they're like, oh, so you got this guy coming, this guy's coming to my house now instead of you? Somebody just asks the question. You're like, yeah, I can't do it. They're like, oh, they're going to drop me. They're going to. Yeah, absolutely. He's out there now. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving on up in the ladder and uh, working on the business side of things and uh, we're growing. So there's a lot more things in the office I'm doing. They're awesome. You're in great hands. He's going to be a super rad guy for you to uh, have cleaning your windows. Cool. Well, congrats. That's it. Understanding most all of this stuff, your brain is what stops you from most of these things. Your brain is what tells you one thing when reality is something different. And those are my top five lies in the industry because so many people believe them that they've been myths forever. So there you go. I'm done. I'm 
not meaning to get heated. Um, but I got another uh, ploy for you, by the way. If you're watching the um, podcast or you're listening all the way through, um, there's so many of you that listen all the way through. It's absolutely awesome. Um, but if, um, if you are listening all the way through and you're on a comment on YouTube, even if you listen to this on a podcast, go back to the YouTube, find it, and type in the word, um, let's type in the word um, 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 pole, P-O-L-E, for water fit pole. Just type in pole. Then I'll know you li- watch the whole thing, and everybody else around you who didn't watch the whole thing will be thoroughly confused. And by the way, if you did watch the whole thing, you know I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. Why aren't you using me for your orders? Huh? Shameless plug. Uh, no, I, a lot of you put orders in on your own. I understand that. When you go to checkout and it says, you know, place the order, instead of that, the button right above it says save this cart. All you have to do is click that. Literally, shoot me a text. Yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. My name is this or whatever. I just go, cool. Is your address one, two, three? Awesome. I keep the cart on file. We have all of that. And so many of you can put stuff in. They shop all night. Click the save this cart. I put the order in. Or you can even text me and be like, yo, I need a gross of uh, Master Ettore 18 inch. Cool. Is the address one, two, three? Yep. Cool. It's run. It's done. That's it. You can absolutely be no simpler than using me. It costs you nothing extra, and I get credit for it. And I make, uh, you know, happy noises when I put orders in. So uh, thank you (laughs) for that. And same thing goes with the magazine. I do want everybody that is watching or listening to get a subscription. If you haven't yet, it's literally $69. Get a subscription. It's AWC, American Window Cleaner. Mag, M-A-G, A-W-C, M-A-G dot com forward slash sub. Get a subscription. Do it right now. Get it. It's a once a month magazine delivered to you. Be a nerd like the rest of us and uh, impress your friends with a window cleaning magazine. Anyway, that's my show. I really appreciate everything. Uh, One other side quick note. If you haven't yet, check out the WCR Nation YouTube page. Not WCR but my own YouTube page is starting to do a little bit more content there. I would love a subscribe from you on that side too. And until next week, go out there and don't fall into the myths and the lies. But more importantly, go out there and be epic. <laughs>